This is Kogan Cassius. We're at the Sugar Hut here for the business reunion. Start with that again. Do you want me to start it again? Well, Do you want to start it? No, you're not this is Kogan Cassius for I from London. We're at the Sugar Hut for the business reunion. Man to my left, co-starring in the business, Danny Dyer. What's going on, Dan? Uh, yeah, listen, very well. A bit tired. Can't lie to you. Always tired, me. Go after at the moment doing a film. So I'm running about like a lunatic. Um, I was DJing last night in Lower Stuff. The beautiful lower stuff. Good gig. Got back this morning and um, up here in the Sugar Hut with, 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 with my very good friend Tamar. Business reunion styley. Although I look a bit fucked now. I was a salt in the business. I was young, untouched. Look at the state of me now. Look. And yeah, and, uh, and lovely Mick. And of course, uh, just having a few lagers really on a Sunday night. I'm honoured to be here. So, like you said, we're at the, the business reunion, and are you surprised at all how much of a cult film the business ever turned out to be? People still watch about it and talk about it and watch it like it was yesterday it was made. I think um, it was one of them jobs that when we were shooting it, I, I knew it was going to be special. I mean, all Nick really does. I think what most directors do is, is they just take inspiration from films that they that they love themselves. Really, I'm not saying it's a rip off, but. You know, it's that rise and fall of, you know, the sort of Ray Liotta character, which is what I play in Goodfellas, you know, someone who gets involved in a little mob and thinks he wants to be a gangster and thinks, well, hold on, this ain't, this ain't a bit of me, but gets wrapped up in the whole sexiness of the lifestyle. And, and it was quite an honest thing, and I think the 80s was, it was a strange old decade, but we, made, we managed to make the 80s look sexy. I mean, it's a sexy film, you know what I mean? I mean, if I, if I, if I could fuck it, I'd fuck that film. You're in a tight pair of feeler shorts, is, that's what you're talking about. That's what I'm saying, and now I could get away with them then. I mean, now I've got a derby. I mean, I'd have a derby hanging over them and everything. But, um, I mean, look, listen, it's a great, it was a great part of it. It was a tough gig for me because, I, I mean, you watch it again, I don't really talk a lot. It's all narration. So it's all, I learnt a lot as an actor because I use my eyes a lot and react and think about where I was in the story. And, of course, I've got the biggest journey in it, you know, sort of I start off like a kid and by the end of it I'm a proper, like, you know, villain. But, um, you know, they're, they're rare films, they come around very rarely, and it was just a, a, a great opportunity for me. The business was in 2005, was it? Uh, 2000, and Football Factory was 2004, so yeah, I think 2005, yeah. So what, why, in your opinion, are films like Football Factory, The Business, why aren't they being films of that cult status being made now, or do you think they are? I think, look, listen, I've done a lot of movies, and I think uh, good scripts are rare. You know, so you know you can only do what's put in front of you. I think you know them two for me was the sort of defining moments in my career. I think you know it was a joy to work with Nick. Shame I didn't get to do the Sweeney. You know I'd love to have been part of that, but I think we started the whole football hooligan film craze off. Really, I think with the football factory, it was honest, it was real. I mean, after the extras in it were on tag. I mean, everyone, every, everybody you see in that film had, had, had you know been part of a firm or you know had been Nick for it or. Not condoning it, but uh, you know, we didn't glamorise it. But um, I think it was an honest film, and when obviously it started off, you know, banging out hooligan films every half hour after that. So um, I think I'm proud of the fact that we was the first one. You know, we really, we really, you know, made a stand with it. So, like I said, they're rare. Like, I'd love to do fucking films like that all the time. Unfortunately, I got a mortgage. So now and again, you've got to take, um, you know, another little path and do other little things. At the moment, I'm playing a, uh, I'm doing an arty film. I'm, I've got to speak French. I'm fucking struggling. But Can you so give us a little, um, little go of your French wisdom? One word. Tout vient. Which means? Oh, I don't fuck that. I don't. <laughs> no, I, I actually start the French stuff next week. But it's like a love story. It's really intense. A bit like um, Last Tango in Paris. Just like uh, two people in a house, you know, falling in love and weird and intense. And but it's, it's, I'm trying to do something different. But we film after that. What I'm doing is a film called Vendetta, which is like Death Wish. And it's just me running around fucking stabbing people. So you know, maybe go back to basics. But me and Tamra got some stuff coming up as well. So you know, it's all a bit low key at the moment. We're, um, we've got some stuff coming up. We need to work together. It's, just very, it's vital that we get something out there again. You know. So obviously between your DJing, your acting, and what, what else is going on in the world of Danny Dyer? Um, not much really, just being a parent, bringing up my kids. You know, I've got my 16 year old daughter now, she's driving me fucking insane. Love it to death, love my babies. So really, yeah, it's just trying to juggle, juggle everything really, and being, trying to be a, you know, a role model for my kids really, that's, that's my priority. But like I said, I'm, I'm going to start um, you know, trying to do different things. I'm going to play Alfie in the West End next year, so I'm going to go and do a theatre run for six months. Petrified. 
But I think it's an iconic role, something I need to do, get back to basics. You know, that starts next July. Going to bang out a couple of films before that, you know, and hopefully everything's going to, you know, slip into place. But, um, you know, honour to be here. I do quite like the sugar, I love Mick, love Kirk. Um, and I love boozing. So... It's the perfect place to be, and also you've joined the Twitter world now, Danny. Yeah. Mr. D. Dyer. Yeah, well, that was my phone then, how mad was that? Yeah, I'm a Twitter nut now. I was always... Um, you tweet you know, some weird stuff, didn't you? Well, I tweet, well, I tweet, I think if you're going to tweet, tweet. Don't fucking tweet you're in Starbucks. Don't tweet about fucking beetroot smoothies, you know what I mean? You know, tweet about what's going on in your brain. Sometimes I've got in trouble for it, other times I think I'm, I'm, I'm quite an honest person. You know, but I can see that it's quite a good uh, uh, marketing tool, you know, and I think if you use it in the right way, it can be quite powerful. But, you know, I do, um, I I'll tend to try and make people laugh, you know. I think, um, I, I, and I love all this trolling bollocks. I want people trying to give it to me, and I, I go, come on, it's got to work, me and you. So I, I'm constantly mugging people off, you know. And also, it was great yesterday because uh, West Ham beat Chelsea. So I tweeted the fuck out of that. Milked the life out of that, I did, honestly. But did you um, get a lot of mug on Twitter? What do you mean? Because it's your word, isn't it? Mug, mug. People well, no, no, funny enough, not I'm calling you a mug, obviously, then. That's you know, the link I mean. that is because at the moment I'm selling mugs. So if you go into my Twitter uh, account, you click on the little link, I'm selling mugs with my face on the front and mug. All right? Don't laugh, you. <laughs> 9 dollars they come with a Christmas card signed by me. Quality mug. Get involved. Get involved. 9 99 Bum, bum, bum. Sweet as, cup of tea in the morning, my, my boat on it. You're actually you're pointing, calling someone a mug. It's me with a little speech bubble going mag. Right, bump. Did you ever think about trademarking that, that word? Because it is. I've recently found out I don't know my own name. I better go and buy my own name. I thought my mother owned my fucking name. So you've got to buy your own name, it's a grand. Buy your own signature, that's another grand. Everything's a grand. You know, but um, no one's bought it yet, so I've got, you know, you buy the rights to your own name, your own image as well is another thing, but I, I can't be fucked with that, so I think I'm a bit late on that one. But um, yeah, I think, uh, you know. Try and, you know, earn a few quid out of it. Why not? Well, like I said, I've got kids to bring up. You know, so <laughs> click on the link. Go and get me mug. Don't be a mug. Get his mug. Don't be a mug. Go and get me mug. Call it a mug, you know. Your mug. I'm going to buy one of your mugs. I'm going to go tomorrow, tonight in a, in a minute, actually. Get one of your mugs. Mm, all right, well, get yourself a couple. Two. Get a couple, yeah. Get get couple. Get, get six. Go on. That's all right. Oh, perfect. Fucking ka -ching. Right, listen, Danny, thank you very much for talking to iFilm London, as you always, always do. Pleasure talking to iFilm. And I've got a lot of respect for you, Mob, a good little mob, and uh, thanks for talking to me and being a gentleman, as no usual. Problem, listen, you have a good night, and uh, like I said, go and buy his mug. You gonna stop holding me in there, or? You can hold him, it's all right. Kogan Cassius with the wonderful Danny Dyer for iFilm London. Follow him at Mr. D Dyer. Still holding him in. <laughs> <Sweet kid. laughs>